Again, in today's gospel, we have a phrase that we only find in Luke's account. And it's this phrase that's translated a bit differently in different places by different people. Behold, the kingdom of God is among you. This among you, what does that mean exactly? The fathers of the church preferred the translation, the kingdom of God is within you. The point, I suppose, of this phrase in this conversation Jesus is having with the Pharisees is to invite them out of a perspective on the earthly kingdom. When Pope Francis first became Pope, one of the things he wrote about in his early letters was something he called spiritual worldliness. Now, if anything, I would say that we could see that attitude coming out in the Pharisees in today's Gospel. These Pharisees who've been drawn, so to speak, into a kind of devotion to the things of God, suddenly, at some point in their life, become incredibly worldly. How did these religious pursuits end up pointing them right back to the world. Because as the Pharisees understand the kingdom of God, it's very simple. The kingdom of God is ruled by God, but God isn't around, so he needs someone else to run the kingdom for him. The Pharisees seem like they're pretty well situated to be running that kingdom in the absence of God. And of course, the absence of God looks a lot like God doesn't exist, and that ends up meaning, in fact, I am God, or a God. And you can see that this attitude is is appearing in the Pharisees. Those who were extremely religious, so to speak, replace, whether they are very conscious of it or not, replace God, come to take God's place. And so there is a kind of temptation in our spiritual lives to, after having been converted, to return, so to speak, to the world. And there's lots of ways to excuse that. There's evangelization, enculturation, um, I don't know, getting dirty with the sheep. Uh, there's, all, there's all kinds of ways that we excuse in fact, becoming worldly again. Whereas the whole preparation that Jesus is inviting us to is leaving this world, not finding ways to take up residence permanently here or organizing everything, fixing everything, controlling everything. All these attitudes are just incredibly against what G- the kingdom that Jesus has come to set up. Don't go off, don't run in pursuit of an earthly kingdom. We can see also in the first in the letter today of St. Paul to Philemon the same concern that Paul has for someone who's close to him in Christ, whose slave has become, in fact, a disciple, Onesimus. So this letter of St. Paul to Philemon, encouraging Philemon to no longer consider Onesimus as a slave, no longer according to this earthly perspective, but in a heavenly perspective. So we can ask our Lord to help us today to let go, perhaps, of things that have snuck back into our lives. This asedia, this problem of a kind of spiritual boredom. The spiritual things, the invisible world, eh, loses its appeal. That's a sin. It's not, well, we just need to find something else to do. No, it's a sin. If we allow the spiritual world to lose its appeal, that's a sin. It's not just, oh, I guess you're missing your motivation. Let's see if we can find some way to reinflate your tires, get you going again. The only way to rekindle the fire 
of God in our lives and in our hearts is to return to Him. In our prayer, in our penance, in our study, in our attitude of heart. So we can ask our Lord to help us to return to Him, the true King, and to not seek to build this earthly kingdom at the expense of the heavenly one.